Good evening and welcome to Football First. Myself, I'm here, and this guy doesn't look like Marco, who will be joining us later on in the program. I'd like to introduce Nathaniel Lepani. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Jerry. Yep. And Nathaniel, uh, you will, of course, be joining us later on also to talk about mm -hmm. uh, both the UEFA Champions League, uh, big results over there. But, however, the biggest news in football this week is, of course, that resounding 2 0 victory by now back to back Telecom National yes. Soccer League uh, grand finalists or grand final winners and champions, Lay City dwellers. Without much ado, let's take a look at the highlights from the 2016 Telecom National Soccer League grand final. And uh, this is uh, the moment that we have all been waiting for. Both sides reverting back to their traditional colors. Well, they show us what they can do whenever they have an opportunity to score. Standard, they do prefer that sort of surface in Papua New Guinea. Well, Marco, we are on this afternoon. Wouldn't be able to get any power that had a wins possession. Goes for a cross back into the center. Beating of the ball. Troy Gunemba with it. Raymond, in fact. Good touch in for his brother, Dabin Yaba. Lay City turning on the style. Come along. Lay City boxing. Dabin Yaba wins it. Raymond Gunemba is free. Cross comes in. Hikari playing it a bit more faster. Come along, however. Wasn't able to get there. That was a poor challenge. Michael Foster, that was a poor not challenge. happy with the challenge by Kitizama Tinito. Troy Gunemba wins it. His brother's pushing forward. Sammy Campbell, poor clearance. Matthew David. <laughs> Manuel Simon crosses it. Good ball coming in. Tekieta Kremuera. Poor pass. Both sides just unable to get any extended possession at the moment. Wurawama driving forward. Ball out wide. Tommy Sammy. He's got Koraku Paiga in the center. Oh, what a poor play. This afternoon, Tommy Sammy might take a shot. Faint. Tutizama Tanito is free. And Urawama. Urawama. Through ball for Tommy Sammy. Chance now for Hikari. Lay City under pressure. Tutizama Tanito with it. Cross coming in. And Tommy Sammy. He's taking no chances. Dabin Yaba. Edge of the box. Poor header by... Remuera, over Bitter's space. Beautiful in swinging ball, Leslie Kalai. Step forward. Warawama touches it out wide. Koraku Paiga cross comes in. Tommy Sammy might take it. Ronald Warrison, another fumble on the team, other. 14 players all together for Hikari. And Roger Adams calls an end to the first the half. Down in Port Moresby. Warawama. Touches it for David Mutter. Hikari again pushing players forward. Emmanuel Simon, beautiful cross coming in. Take it. Raymond Gunemba curls it in. Bobby Yama is the first. Michael Foster over it. And he wins possession. Quick throw in for Wurawama. Tommy Sammy with the left foot. Second corner in only 20 seconds. Gunemba, higher ball this time. Handball appeal, however, poor answer the referee. That looked like he was and in. It does appear to be the first goal of the match. It was directly from a corner. I thought the ball was already the inside. It comes in. Otto Kusunan. Goal mm. for it. It's hard to see from this angle. Box. Although I'm surprised that Otto Kusunan is still driving forward. Good ball out to Tutizama Tanito. Crosses the ball. Cleared by Talao as far as Barry Mansala. Hikari with an opportunity. One touch in. Koraku Paiga lays it on. Wurawama. Wurawama driving forward. Pushing forward. Good touch by the defender. Has to be careful. Hikari don't have that many numbers. Both players brought off the ball. It's getting a bit physical this afternoon. Remuera not happy with. 
possession by the midfielder. Akari have really had any opportunity. Raymond Gunemba. Raymond Gunemba in space, one on one against. He takes a shot. Yeah. Acid mistake from a defender. Instead of then passing it vertically in front of you, you pass it horizontally to your. It was a poor pass by Semi Campbell and. It was a lurk in Raymond Gonemba. Remuera couldn't get there in time. And he slides it past Leslie Kalai for the National Soccer League. And it is full time here at the Sir John Guy Stadium. Welcome back to Football First. I'm joined here tonight by a former PNG national team striker and current FC Port Moresby forward, Nathaniel Lepani. Thank you. Nathaniel, welcome to Football First. And you are here specifically to talk about this game. Yep. The first goal that was scored mm -hmm. uh, came from Raymond Gunemba curling a, a corner coming in. Now, we had a long discussion yes, about we did. This, whether, whether it was a goal or not. Goal line technology, perfect example of its use. Unfortunately, we didn't have it here. Now, which players impress you the most? Oh, you can't go past uh, Lay's two premier strikers, national team strikers as well, um, Nigel and Raymond. I, I felt they, they also, they had that fire in the belly when it came to the grand final. They, they really gave it their all. You could see the uh, elation on Raymond's face and his body as he scored the first goal. You know, it was a real sigh of relief. Where did Raymond come from? Because my eyes were on that ball. Yeah, no, look, Raymond, I, he was down here on the sideline getting his armband fixed, um, which, which made him out of sight of the, the defensive line. He was able to come straight in, steal the ball off from Uera and go to goal. As a striker playing in such a massive game, because you've, you've featured in what, three grand finals uh, in the NSL. Right. What are the thoughts that go through your head? Look, I think the occasion can sometimes get the better of you, you know, with the crowd chanting and, and getting involved, uh, acting almost as a 12th player. You know, nerves come into play. Um, just, yeah, so there's potential that the opportunities were there, they just weren't taken, unfortunately. Now, I have said this before, that Hikari do have this very wide Yes. Uh, two defensive uh, center backs. Is that something that allowed uh, Lay City to have a lot more space out wide, primarily? Yeah, certainly. I mean, we, we saw during the grand final that a lot of their attacks were coming from the, the wings. And I think they, they formed their game plan to, to take advantage of that. And for Hikari themselves, now, why is it they could beat these two? Because Lay City's defense. In effect, this was the same first eleven. Yep. That from the previous week. The, from the, the previous week. week. Correct. How? Why is it that Koryak and Tommy Sammy found very, very mm. little space, uh, especially around this area? It, it's tough to determine what for sure. I mean, again, it potentially it was just a matter of uh, a different mindset coming into the game. You know, for, for Hikari, they had won their grand final the week before. For Lei, this was it. This was really their opportunity to prove that, that they're a quality team in PNG, and, and they did it. Now, if you had been on the sideline, what instructions, what would you have done? How, how would you have restructured your players? And I'd like you to show the country right now. Now, you don't have that <laughs> much coaching experience at the moment. No, I don't. Only on FIFA, but that doesn't yeah. count. On the whiteboard right now, I would. What would you have done if you were the team in red, taking on these strong defenders here in blue? And, and I'd like you to show us. No, look. Um, given the fact that they they are quite solid in the middle, I would look for the wings primarily. May I? Okay. So we attack the wings here, right? Use your effective. David Muta here is he's fantastic, best player in the country when it comes to distributing the ball. And he's fantastic at it. He's pinpoint accuracy. He's played with Beckham. I think some of his quality rubbed off on him during that game in, in New Zealand that, that year. Get him to distribute the ball through the channels, right? And then effectively, because you've got a finisher in Koryak, top goal scorer this season, not for, for no reason. He, I mean, he's been extremely uh, effective up front. No, look, I, I think it was a, a case of just blocking off the channels in which they usually operate. So effectively, they were nullifying any of the, the potential balls that David could play because he's also a player that looks for the space 
to identify where he can play the channels. So if he felt that they were being blocked off, their, their attack had to change immediately. And unfortunately for them, it looks like they had no plan B. What would have been the psychology um, of the coaches by half time? Because it was nil all at half time. Exactly. Look, I, I think for, for Ley, for, for Mr. Gunemba, he would have been approaching it saying, look, guys, we've got 45 minutes. We're going to get the win in the second half. Keep giving it all. So I think it would have been more of an, a psychological um, pep talk at halftime. Hikari, uh, by the looks of it, it, could, it may well have been a case of let's just continue our game. We're, we're confident in the ability of our players and our strikers. We know we can get goals. So let's just continue. Do you think changes should have been made earlier by... I was actually surprised about that. I saw that three subs were not used through for by either team during the game. And and as an example, during the, the second half with 2-0 uh, up, um, there was a, an injury to one of the players, to the Lay City players, and a substitution wasn't made. And for me, as, as the, you know, a tactical coach would have said, look, one of our players is injured, let's take him off, let's use fresh legs, let's block up the defense, ensure that no last minute goals are scored. But yeah, no, and so in that sense, I was quite surprised that uh, there weren't tactical changes made. If they both make it into the grand final, do you think the tactics will change? Oh, obviously. I mean, a year is a long time in football, in, in any league in the country, uh, in, in the world, in the country. I think it will determine a lot on which players are still retained by the e either of the clubs. If uh, imports are brought in, if, if players from other clubs are brought in. So I think a lot of the tactics will be determined on, on how they progress through the season. But if they've gone to the grand final, I can tell you they'll both be the, considered the best teams in the country. So it, it won't be by uh, any fluke, I can tell you that. Well, Nathaniel, thank you very much. And you'll be joining us uh, later on in the program. Yes. Uh, towards the end, talking about uh, your favorite team, Ole, Ole Forza, Football Forza Club Barcelona. Barcelona. Welcome back to Football First. We have the privilege of having the CEO for the local organizing committee for the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup, Seamus Martin. Seamus, welcome to Football First. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Now, you've just arrived, uh, well, a few days ago on Sunday back from uh, Switzerland, and uh, you were there attending the draws for the Under-20 Women's World Cup. Yeah, I was lucky enough to be at the home of FIFA for a week. Um, combining uh, a meeting of the organising committee together with some bilateral meetings um, with the FIFA staff and then culminating in the official draw, which was, um, which was fantastic and great to, to know who's playing who and, and how the tournament's going to pan out on the pitch. Now, there were two processes towards the, the draws itself. We have the concept where a selection is done primarily from separate pots. Uh, are, are these based on the rankings or performances that the teams have had prior? To the World Cup? Yeah, that's right, Jeremy. The, the FIFA have now taken a look at historical performances um, from teams who've qualified for this event. In the past, they'd looked at geographical separation, so trying to keep these teams from the same confederations apart. Mm. But what that meant was there was some lopsided competition. So to try and even it up, they've looked at those countries that have done well in the past and then uh, tried to avoid them to make a more exciting tournament. Um, PNG, luckily, have been placed in, in pot one, so mm. they're, uh, they're in with some of the heavy hitters, the Germanys. Um, of this world, who've won it a number of times, Nigeria as well. Um, and then it goes right down to those teams with their first participation, so Venezuela and Spain with their first time were in pot D. Um, I mean, what's come out though, regardless, is going to be 32 fantastic matches of football here in Papua New Guinea. And I think. Absolutely. Um, well, I think, Chairman, I think it's really great to see you here. I don't think this is going to be the last time because from here until the World Cup, I think we would like to see you here more and more often to discuss as we get in. And I think it's also impressive if you look at this uh, the pools. I mean, it's incredible. You have the best teams in the world, historically speaking, Germany, France, Spain. United States when it comes to women's football and then all of a sudden you see Papua New Guinea. It's, it's a strange effect in a way but it's definitely a positive one and it shows what is happening to football worldwide in a way. It's opening up to new frontiers, uh, teams that never really competed at this level for the first time in the history of football will do that. That's, that's quite an interesting development. Yeah, I, I must admit, um, you know, for myself being in Zurich, being lucky enough to be w at one of the rehearsals, um, it was only when you saw the graphic of, of the, the, the mock draw which they went through and you saw Papua New Guinea's name there <laughs> that it really became, you know, we're really going to host the World Cup here. You know, th these girls are going to be playing against some of the best players in their age group, some of the future stars of the world game, and it is truly fantastic. And if you look 
um, Jordan uh, hosting the Under-17 Women's World Cup a month before us. And, and I think this is part of the, the new FIFA direction, that they're looking to take the games to, to, to new areas and new horizons. And because Gianni Infantino, the new FIFA president, has stated that he, he does find women's football to be an untapped market. Yeah, that's right. I mean, he's uh, a big supporter of Papua New Guinea and hosting this tournament. Um, you know, speech he made at the official draw was, was great in terms of his support for the country. He's physically been here himself. I think you interviewed him late last year. Um, so, yeah, no, he's a, a huge supporter and looking to spread the game to as many corners of the globe as possible. I'm just moving away from um, everything else. Let's look at the groups themselves. In Group A, we have Papua New Guinea, Brazil, Sweden, and Korea, Group B, Spain, Canada, Japan, Nigeria. In Group C, France, the United States of America, Ghana, New Zealand. And then finally in Group uh, D, Germany, Venezuela, Mexico, and the Korea Republic. It's going to be tough. I mean, that's going to be very difficult to predict at this stage because obviously we're not that familiar with the uh, football in, uh, at, at this level uh, worldwide. I mean, we've seen bits and pieces here and there. I mean, I saw Nigeria play and I was really impressed uh, as well as the United States. So I'm not sure about the other teams. It will be interesting to see how Papua New Guinea can perform against these giants of football. So that would be interesting because that, that you can really assess the potential of this nation you know, when it comes to women's football. So what did you tell them when you were in, in, uh, in Zurich, you know, in, on, on the behalf of Papua New Guinea? You know? Yeah, I mean, we, we, had, we had the organizing committee and we had an opportunity to, to present our case. And as, as people were probably aware, there's been a lot of concern, I guess, around the world about the progress to date and how things are going. Um, and yeah, had, had an, uh, an opportunity to, organ to address what they call the organizing committee. So that's a, a committee made up of women from around the world. Um, chaired by Miss Sonia Benami from the Turks and Caicos Islands in the Caribbean, <laughs> so a truly a truly uh, global group of, of women there, as well. And um, yeah, you know, we we put together a, a detailed presentation. We outlined where we are. We weren't we didn't hide behind anything. We didn't try and sugarcoat you know things that that weren't completed or that had been missed or overlooked. And and we presented a way forward. And the feedback that we got afterwards was that um, you know that we were in a much better place than we were in September when I, I last presented. And uh, there was a lot of excitement moving forward. Yes, there's, there's still concerns that the time frame that we've got left to, to do what we need to do is, is short and is tight. But I, I, I stress the point that if there was ever a country that can pull something together at the last minute, it would be Papua New Guinea. Final question. Uh, now, you are from two nationalities coming here into Papua New Guinea. Who will you be supporting in the FIFA Women's World Cup 2016 Papua New Guinea? It's hard to go past the host nation. I've uh, fallen in love with the country in the, the eight months that I've been here. Um, you look, I feel sorry for my sisters from New Zealand. They've been drawn a very tough group. Um, but oh, for yeah. shocks are you as a two, <laughs> no, but I, I, look, I look forward to, uh, you know, to joining the 15,000, singing the national anthem on that opening night. I think it's going to be an emotional, emotional uh, experience and, and definitely the culmination of, of a lot of hard work. So. No, I'm really, really excited for, um, for the coming months ahead and, and proud to be PNG. Marco, yourself? Well, I don't see Italy in here, unfortunately, so I'm free to pick up the best team. And that's something that I love in, in, in World Cups. Actually, sometimes I'm, I'm happy if Italy is, is eliminated, so I can really watch every single game and really relax and get a sense of who plays really the best football. And as far as I've seen, uh, we're going to watch some interesting games uh, in, in Papua New Guinea, so the best will win, I hope. The best will win indeed, and Nathaniel Lepani joins us on the other side. Seamus Martin, thank you very much for your time tonight on Football First.